Hi guys, welcome back to Evermore Explore. Today we're out doing something a lot different. We're out foraging. Um, hopefully for our session we're gaining bait. Um, there might be some bits that we might want to eat and cook, but we're, we'll take you on the journey, show you what it's all about. Show you um, the sea life. Um, it's, yeah, all the creatures where they live and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not yeah. just me and Chris today. We've got my partner's daughter. This is Danielle. Hi. And we're hopefully going to have some fun on the rocks and find all sorts. So yeah. we'll be back with you shortly. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers are gone. Danielle has just found a monster mussel. Look at the size of that, guys. Right guys, Danielle has just found this. Can you tell me what that's called, Danielle? A dog whelk. That's right. Um, basically, dog whelks, we find them everywhere in Chris Corner shoreline. They're similar in shape with the periwinkle, the dog whelk, but can grow up to six centimetres in height, this one. And the majority of whelks are usually a pale shade of white. But yeah, good find, Danielle. <laughs> well done. Right guys, what do you want to do? It's obviously, I've split up with a partner over there. We've both got radios on. We'll run through the procedures in a minute about safety. What you want to do when you're foraging, basically lift up all the weeds here. All the sea life will be in here. There we go. You darted in there if you did see it. Very quick. Give me a little drag in it. Right guys, this is the common limpet. Now we get these all over our shorelines in the UK and in Cornwall, etc. Now the limpet shower is conical and can be up to six centimeters long. The color is commonly a shy gray white with occasional yellow tint in them. But yeah, a lovely little bit of sea life and loads of mirror, look. There you go guys, that's a little sea snail, very, very small. So guys, when you start foraging, you want to look around all the kelpie areas, rocky areas, basically for, you know, crabs, shells, mussels, all sorts like that really. And basically just keep digging. What you do is wash the seaweed back and it will come exposed. It's better in little rock pool areas as well. Right guys, this is the little uh, thing we invested in, me and my mate, uh, basically when we're out fishing. There's little radios like this for safety. If you're out on the rocks, you know, when you split up, you can, anything happens, you've got always got the button there. Isn't that right, mate? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. These machines are a brilliant thing to invest in when you're out on the rocks because, if, like Chris said, if anything happens, you can call one another and get the uh, accessible help that you need. So, yeah, brilliant investment. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, anyway, that's basically what it is. Health and safety is number one when you're going out, even if it's two of you, one of you, whatever. And, yeah. Yeah, check. All over. Over, over. Right guys, here we have a little common periwinkle. Um, again, you can find these all across our shoreline. Uh, the common periwinkle is the largest of the species, reaching a min minimum height of about five centimeters. The conical shell has a spiral edges on it, as you can see there. Hang on two seconds. You see that? And um, can range from anything from gray, black, brown, or red. But yeah, 
There you go guys, another little dog whelk. Lovely little colour on him. Yeah, get him back quickly. There you go again, look guys. A few more limpets here. With a couple of little sea snails on there, look. Little, little things. All stuck here, lovely on this rock with all these. This little bit of sea life. But yeah, lovely little things, aren't they? Right guys, um, Danielle's just spotted this thing here. This is a, what Danielle? Beadlet and enemy. That's right. Now these things are beautiful looking little creatures. Um, normally familiar red or green blobby bodies on the rocks at low tide you find these. Uh, these unfurl to reveal waving tentacles when the tide comes in. Very interesting little thing these are. Yeah, good spotting Danielle. Right guys, Danielle has just found a monster mussel. Look at the size of that guys. She's got, she's got way better eyes than both of us down here today, I tell you. She's finding all the good stuff. Well done, Danielle. I'm excited. <laughs> what a beauty. We'll be having that. Right, guys. Here we have snake lock anemones. They have pink tips, green tentacles, and can grow up to 18 centimetres and rarely retract. The anemones are found lower down in rock pools that never dry out as they must stay underwater at all times. However, the anemones want to be as close to the surface as they can without drying out because they have a symbiotic relationship with photosynthetic algae, similar to corals, which need sunlight to flourish. There you are guys, an interesting fact, and a lovely little creature. Right guys, found exactly what we're looking for, mussels. In loads of colonies now these tend to like to stick to reef um, in great amounts as you can see now the common mussel the shell is roughly triangular but however can be depending on the conditions where it's living to the shell is usually a dark shell of blue or purple or occasionally brown now these can hold toxins due to what they feed on so you can never be too sure of what you know would went coming to eating them. That's why I'll always eat from the shop because I'm not too sure myself. But however, they are amazing bait for fishing. See this little guy here, he's a strange little colour, nice and like grey compared to the rest of them. But when taking these, choose only one or two from each bunch and take the biggest two of the size and leave the rest being and move on to each one as you can see here. There's hundreds here. But yeah, that's the muscle. There you go guys, whatever that is, it looks like an old ceramic pot. <laughs> Don't even know if it's ceramic to be honest, but it's giving it a black, like tar substance. Never seen that in my life. Still looking for crabs. There we go. I think that is an old pot. <laughs> Maybe someone to grow flowers here. You guys, when you go foraging, you find... <laughs> looks like a sandbag. <laughs> Very weird. Two little mussel shells in it. Buried down deep there. Right there guys. Um I had a little session foraging. Got enough what I need to last me for the next month or so for bait. We are going to be sorting these out from small to big and replace the small ones um, and keep the biggest. But yeah, lovely little session, found what we're looking for. We had a nice time, haven't we, little one? Yeah. And uh, hopefully more of these to come yet. Cheers and gum. Right, guys, that's the end of our foraging session for today. Um, really enjoyed it. This is our first actual time foraging. <laughs> Hi, Danielle. Hi. And um, we do apologise if we have got any information wrong. I say it's our first trip out foraging. Um, we've got plenty of bait now for the next month or so. And yeah, well, we hope you guys enjoy this. Cheers and gone. Cheers and gone.